We'd like to welcome you from around the world. Chilliquin, let's give them a hand. Yeah. I like to let the internet congregation know what's going on on a weekly basis. Sometimes it's repetitive to us, but we have hundreds of new people every week watch the service. So it's not the same people tuning in. And we can tell by just what God's doing that as these prayers are coming in from around the world, um, a lot of times during the week, if I'm dealing with something, I say, Lord, I just tap into all these prayers that are coming from around the world and receive it. Amen? So feel free to know there's a lot of people praying for you. We had a young lady contact us from Asia this week. Um, she let us know that she prayed um, this week to receive Christ. And her... This is what's powerful. Her Facebook page, she has 8,158 followers that follow her Facebook page. So when she put that heart emoji and let us know that, those 8,158 people heard that. So this shows you how rapidly God is working in the earth. And technology can go both ways. But here's a young lady that just gave her heart to Christ, contacted us from Asia. And that just really grabbed me when I saw that she had 8,158 people that follow what she talks about on her Facebook page. So you guys get excited about 2022 because God is harvesting rapidly around the world. And... Um, I think there's 8 billion cell phones on the earth and there's 2 billion laptop desktop computers. So there's about 7 billion people and uh, 10 billion computers. So it's going out there. So in the last 23 months, we've ministered in 125 countries. We have 12 house churches now and our house churches meet seven days a week. So pretty much if you need to get plugged in, we have a house church seven days a week. And then we have a celebration service here on uh, Saturday nights. So that's 13 services a week. You guys are awesome. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, we've had 141 people make decisions for Christ in our celebration service. And uh, hundreds of people online have received Christ. Um, and I think it's pretty awesome that YouTube, this is the first time we've ever had them send us an email. And this is from YouTube. Uh, Cheers to having such loving followers. It's time to celebrate all your hard work and the community you've built. In the last 12 months, you've had 63,600 views of your Saturday night service. That's not what we're making up. That's YouTube contacting us. And whoever had to send that email, that was probably a witness to them too. Amen? So thank you for all your prayers. Um, if you missed last week's message, um, last week's message was on self-control going into 2022. If you missed that message, it's on Last Day's Harvest Ministries on our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button and you can go and watch it. And uh, we have 1,163 followers now on Facebook and YouTube. As soon as it hits the internet, it chimes and that keeps growing weekly. And so the title of my message tonight is now, Wes, is this the first time your wife's been here? Yes. She's shy. Hey, that's all right. Now, those of you watching from around the world, I'm going to disappear for a minute because i got to hand out some lifesavers. I'll be back. Arnold said that, but I'll use it. All right. I just, when I looked back and saw her pretty face, I said, so there's yours. Let's give them a hand. Amen. All right. That makes sure we keep cash and carry in business, buying their lifesavers, amen? So the title of my message tonight is Christmas, the Splitting of Time. Christmas, the Splitting of Time. Now, I've been preaching for 33 years, 
And this is the first time I've ever taught this message. So this kind of, I was like, wow, Lord, I never thought about Christmas actually split time. Mm -hmm. So you guys are getting something hot off the griddle tonight. This pancake just got cooked. So we're going we're gonna to nibble on it and back it up with some scripture. But the title of my message is Christmas, the splitting of time. The definition of splitting is the action of dividing something. When Jesus was born, you had B.C., before Christ, and a lot of people think A.D. means after death, and that's not what it means. A.D. represents the birth of Christ. So A.D. represent the birth of Christ. God split time. Christians should propel, this should propel us to win souls and make disciples. Christmas every year shows us the clock is counting down. I guarantee after you leave tonight, you'll never view Christmas the same way. Because when Jesus was born, it actually split time. B.C., A.D. From Adam and Eve to Jesus was 4,000 years. From Jesus' birth to today, 2021, there's only seven days total in the Bible. And I'll explain that to you from Scripture. But we need to realize we're coming to the end of the sixth day. And the only other day in the Bible is the millennial reign, and that's the seventh day. Because mm -hmm. to God, a thousand years is a day. Right. A thousand years goes by, it's a 24-hour period to God. Mm -hmm. That's how quick. If you live to a hundred, God saw your life in 2.4 hours, mm -hmm. if you live to a hundred. That's why the Bible says your life is a vapor. It's a mist. You're only here for a moment, and Mike, only what we do for Jesus is going to last. Mm -hmm. That's all that's going to matter in eternity. So you can look at me like a calf staring at a new gate, and that's okay. Because we'll back it up with scripture, but it's going to give you something to think about the next time Christmas rolls around. God split time with a baby named Jesus. Mm -hmm. So... God split time, Christmas should propel us to win souls and make disciples. Christmas every year shows us the clock is counting down. And I read this in the last few months a couple of times. Uh, it's a story about the starfish. And as I was praying today, the Lord said, Randy, I want you to open up your message with the story about the starfish because it's going to tie into the end of my message. So I've read this a few times, and it's amazing how just reading this couple of paragraphs has impacted people around the world. Mm -hmm. So this is a true story. It's called the Starfish Story. The gist of the story is a man walks along the beach one morning after a storm has watched thousands of starfish on the shore. So this big storm came in and thousands of starfish were washed up on the shore and stranded. As the man walks, he sees a boy at a distance stopping and stooping down and doing something. So in the distance, he sees this little boy stooping down and doing something, but he can't tell what the little boy is doing. When he gets closer, the man realizes that the boy is picking up starfish one by one and throwing them back into the water. Surprised by the boy's action, the man says to him, there are thousands of starfish stranded as far as the eye can see. What possible difference can it make? The little boy holds up a starfish he just picked up and looks at it for a moment, then tosses it into the sea and replies, it makes a big difference to this one. God has called you to go find people that are stranded. It's not about a lot of people, it's about one person. I want that to stick in your mind tonight. 
God's Son came into the earth for us to be saved. Mm -hmm. And He's called us to go and make disciples and win people to Jesus. There are thousands of starfish in this basin. That's right. There are starfish right now, if you closed your eyes and thought about some people you know, you would see in your mind them stranded on the shore. And they're waiting for someone to come and pick them up and put them back where they're supposed to be. And most of us, that's someone loving us unconditionally. Amen? Amen. Never get saved to not go to hell. Get saved because someone loves you unconditionally. If you get saved by being scared to not go to hell, you'll be scared your whole walk with Christ. But if you get saved, Sally, because someone loves us unconditionally, you'll always be secure in your salvation. Amen? So I want to read you that story. So let's lay some foundation about the birth of Christ. And you might say, well, Randy, I've been in church my whole life. This camera is going to go around the world this week and hundreds of people are going to hear this and hear this story for the first time. Mm -hmm. right. So whenever you come on a Saturday and you go, oh, I know all that. Mm -hmm. I know all that. There are millions and millions of people that have never heard one verse out of the Bible mm -hmm. and they're starting to hear them. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're getting saved every single week. Every single week, every day of the week, we have people contact us from around the world because we turn this little camera on. And now they're praying for every one of you. Yeah. So receive it, amen? amen? So we're going to lay some foundation out of the word about the birth of Christ. So we're in Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. I'm going to be reading the verses. So Luke 2, 8 through 21. Luke chapter 2. And thanks for coming tonight. I appreciate it. God's awesome. Somebody goes, I, th I thought there was only going to be a couple people here. We got, a, we got a hardcore crowd here, man. So Luke 2, 8 through 21. Luke chapter 2. We're going to lay some foundation. Some of this will be familiar to you. But like I said, some of the people watching online, this will be the first time they've ever heard these verses in their life. So if you've already heard these, you're blessed. Amen. So Luke chapter 2, 8 through 21. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Verse 9. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Verse 11. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find him a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Verse 13. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened with the Lord has told us about. So verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Verse 21, on the eighth day, when it was time for circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. So there's a lot of angelic things going on, a lot of prophetic things going on. So now what I want to give you tonight is some of the history for the years after the birth 
that will motivate us to win souls and disciple people for Jesus in 2022. A lot of times we come to a Christmas service, we read these verses, that's it, it's over. And all we have left in our mind is a little baby Jesus. And cool, man, see you again next Christmas. Well, tonight we're going to take it up a notch and let you know a lot was going on after that manger. And it was intense and it was intentional. And that's why we need to realize Jesus split time. And as soon as he was born, the clock started counting down and we'll back that up with scriptures. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Matthew 2, 13 through 18. And let's take a little look at what happens after this scenario that we've heard all of our lives the flannel graphs in Sunday school, and we walk out of the church going, hey, that, that, was, that was cute. That was nice. Well, tonight when you leave church, you're going to go, wow, what am I going to do with this man named Jesus in my life in 2022? And I'm going to help, help you with the word, what the word tells you to do. So Matthew 2, 13 through 18. Matthew Chapter 2, 13 through 18. It's kind of ironic because we're thinking, oh, baby Jesus, he's born, everything's cool. And the heading of these verses, the escape to Egypt. Well, you're telling me, Randy, after he was born, he had to go to a foreign country where being a Jew was despised? <laughs> Can you imagine when Michelle and her husband had their first baby and they had to go move to a foreign country because someone was threatening to kill their child. And they had to go to a country where ethnically they were despised. Is this putting a little different spin on Christmas? Is this, is this kind of helping you realize this wasn't a tinker toy message? Once he was born, and I'll back it up with scripture, King Herod said, kill every child two years and younger. Dead. So can you imagine if you had to move to Haiti, from here, you had to move to Haiti with your baby, homeless, and your ethnicity was actually a real negative for you. That you guys are going to walk out of this isn't to put you down about Christmas, but hopefully it sobers you up a little bit. Christmas should just rock your world to go win souls for Christ. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a message I've ever taught this week. The Lord said, this is what I want you to talk about, Randy. Verse 13, Matthew 2, 13 through 18. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother. Escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for your child to kill him. Wait a minute. We just had Christmas, man. We, we just had a tree. We, we just opened some gifts. We went over to Dan's and ate turkey and roast beef and ham. Isn't, isn't that what this was about today? What are you talking about, escape? Verse 14. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. You know what happened when Moses was in Egypt. The Jews were in slavery for 400 years there. It's not the best place to take your little Jewish baby. Verse 15, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. Major prophecy. They had, how can Jesus born in Israel, be, how can that guy get called out of Egypt? Well, guess what? Herod was killing all children two years and younger. Can you imagine if that happened in the Klamath Basin? 
Can you imagine if that was across the state of Oregon? Whole different view of Christmas, huh? Right. Verse 16, when Herod realized he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi about the birth of the Savior. Verse 17, then what was said through the prophecy through Jeremiah was fulfilled. So here's another prophecy of something that was going to happen when Jesus was born. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because all are no more. So all of these women after the birth of Christ all of their children were killed. Any boy two years and younger was put to death trying to find Jesus. I always say there's two basket cases in the Bible. The first basket case was Moses. Moses' mom put him in a little basket, set him in the Nile, floated him to Pharaoh's house. First basket case. Guess what happened then? All children two years and younger killed because they knew some form of a deliverer was being born. Same thing. I'm not trying to be a downer tonight. I'm trying to be a motivator. Anytime Christmas comes around, you need to lock in. Time was split. Satan knows his time is short. Get busy for the next year. Amen? Amen? So, verse 19. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. So now another dream, Ed. In Egypt, an angel appears, verse 20, and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. Verse 21, so he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But this is Joseph. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father, Herod. So the son of the man that caused all the children to be killed was now the king. So Joseph was afraid. He was afraid to go there, having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. Verse 23, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled, was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. So again, here's another prophetic word that he wasn't able to go back where he wanted to live. He had to go back and live in Nazareth. Another prophecies. You got angels, you got prophecies. Mm -hmm. They're going, come on, Randy, you're blowing up my Christmas image, man. <laughs> That's all right, just something for you to chew on, like some tough jerky, man. Like we used to make elk jerky when I was little. You'd be gnawing on that stuff, man. <laughs> Can you imagine being a Jew and having to live in Egypt? Think about it. Do some study. We must realize from Adam and Eve to Jesus' birth was 4,000 years. From Jesus' birth to present day, 2021, is 2,000 plus years. One day to the Lord is 1,000 years. So six days have passed to God, the last 6,000 years has went by in six days. And like I told you, there's only seven days in the whole Bible. From Adam and Eve to the end of the millennial reign. So what? guess what's going to happen if we're almost into the seventh day? Rapture, Armageddon. You're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. You're going to hear of pestilences. I don't know if you've heard of a pestilence lately, but it's called an uncontrollable disease that will go around the world. 
You will hear of earthquakes. <coughs> you will hear of rioting. Nations rising up against nations. So six days have passed. There are only 7,000 years in the Bible. 6,000 years and then the seventh year is the millennial reign. And that's when Christ will come and rule and reign for a thousand years. And those of us that are saved, we're going to have glorified bodies during the millennial reign. But the Bible says there will be 1.5 million humans still alive. 1.5 billion humans will make it through the tribulation. And guess what? That thousand years to us will go by in 24 hours. Ed, glorified bodies. Ed, Ed and Randy going to be standing there watching. And all of a sudden, in a 24-hour period, we're going to watch people live, die, live, die. Generations go by in 24 hours. And guess what happens at the end of the millennial reign? The Bible says they let Satan loose for three months. Three months! A season! Because you still have human beings that live that have never been tempted. All they known is a 1,600 mile square city, 1,600 miles high, 1,600 miles square, came down and set on earth. And guess what happens when they let Satan loose? Mike, for three months, a season, he gets every king of the earth that's still human, and guess what they say? Let's go kill Jesus. <laughs> yep. Great book. <laughs> you should read it. <laughs> Amen. That shows you... Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> I, that, that blows my mind. He's on the planet, man. You can see him. And Satan still has that power to get the kings of the earth to march on the city. And then Jesus said, that's it. New heaven, new earth. That We're done. 2022, we'll have, an, Nick and I were talking about this today. 2022 will have an acceleration of people coming to Christ all over the world. And we are going to be a part of the labor force for the harvest is white. All of us here, all of you watching around the world online, it's going to be the most exciting year of our lives. And if you want to know about a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day of the Lord, that's 2 Peter 3.8. That's, I'm going to reference that so you know I didn't make that up. It is in the Bible. Amen? So you are a vital part of the Lord's work. Remember, Satan is an eternal being. He was the worship leader in heaven. Satan was the worship leader in heaven. And one day he goes, you know what? I think they're worshiping me. I, 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 think, that the, I think the angels are worshiping me. And you know what? He got a third of those bimbos kicked out of heaven with him. So remember, Satan is a fallen angel. He's an eternal being. A thousand years for him is 24 hours. He was in the garden. Tell Jesus, four days. That's it. Four days. As soon as Jesus was born, he said, oh, no, Herod didn't get him killed. I've only got two days left to deceive the world. Merry Christmas, Satan. <laughs> oh, some of you are looking at me like a calf staring at a new gate. I like it. Remember, Satan is an eternal being, a fallen angel. When Jesus was born, he knew he had about 2,000 years, because of prophecy, he had about two days to deceive the world. Well, is that in the Bible, Randy? The Bible says the Antichrist will deceive the nations and the nations will marvel after him. 
It says the world is just going to go after this guy. That when you see someone stand up that's a world leader and everybody's going, you'll know we're in the last seconds. And it's happening. The world is looking for a leader. That's right. I was in Rome one day. I was sitting on my bed watching television in Rome, Italy. Yes, the little hick did travel the world a little bit. <laughs> and I could not believe on Italian television looking for the Antichrist. Oh, that moved the pulpit, man. <laughs> I about fell off the bed in Rome. And it, it went into this commercial looking for this guy. Said how old he would be, everything. And I thought, I'm in the twilight zone or something. <laughs> Guys, there's a group of people looking for this guy. Mm -hmm. wow. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Randy just blew up my brain. You are a vital part of the Lord's work. Remember, Satan is an eternal being, a fallen angel. When Jesus was born, he knew he had about two days, 2,000 years to deceive the world. But I have read the last book of the Bible. We win. We win. So ask Jesus to take over your life. And in 2022, find a stranded starfish and place them back in the ocean. Can Amen. you do that? Amen. Can, can you just find one? <laughs> Our poor visitor over here, her hands on her face is gone. <laughs> Nick, Carol, Sue, what did you invite me to? <laughs> but at the end of the service, I'll say, I'll beat her Zay. All right. All right. She liked that because she speaks German. I do listen when people talk to me. And place them back in the ocean. You are called by Jesus and he has begun a good work in you and he will be faithful to complete it. We have new house churches that have started with one person opening up a house church in their neighbor's house and now more people are coming. It's not about having a big group. It's about can you minister to one and then it'll multiply. Mm -hmm. Take what God's poured into you and pour it into somebody else. So we're going to have an altar call right now, which we do every week. And every week people get saved around the world. People come to Christ here as well. So um, we're just going to pray a simple prayer. And with these online, and if any of you here need to recommit your life or give your life to Jesus for the first time, so we're praying this prayer, just pray with us. So let's just pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and, that you died and that you died and paid for my sins. And paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe. I believe. That you rose again. That you rose again. On the third day. On the third day. Jesus. Jesus. I ask you. I ask you. Into my heart. Into my heart. As my Lord. As my Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer with us online, if you want to on the Facebook page, I love it. Put that heart emoji. We know a lot of you have been... Con, you know, praying about starting a house church so we can be praying for you if you're going to do that. Just put that house emoji on the Facebook page or type house in the comments area. We know for some of you that's a big deal. You could lose your life. These people could lose their life if they start a church in their home. Mm -hmm. So we understand if you can, but if you want us praying for you, put a house emoji or put the word house and we'd love to start praying for you. Love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Awesome.